Okay, welcome to another Clark Auction Preview, this time for our sizzling summer sale, which is on July the 22nd, Sunday starting at 11 a.m. You can preview two days prior, Friday and Saturday from noon to 6 p.m. Our site is www.clarkeny.com to view everything. But let's give you a quick taste of the bucket load of stuff we have. Okay, we have lots of, from a rye home, we have some really wonderful French furniture. We have this, this is actually a parlor set, Louis XV1 gilt uh, parlor set, look at the carving, look at the gilt work on this, really fine carving. Beautiful set, not overly in vogue, but I think with this quality we might have some good interest. Also from the same estate was this wonderful console. Look at the swag carving down here. Beautiful thick specimen type marble. On top of that we have a two good looking angels here. Look like our two Brazilians that work for us, Danny and Nan, but Anyway, these are nice early ones. Missing the wings, unfortunately, but a nice good size. They came from the same estate as these two. I believe these are called funeries. Don't correct me if I'm wrong, just buy them anyway. Good age in these as well. Came in on a walk-in Wednesday, if I remember right, actually. And below that, here we have, look at the carving on this cabinet. We have two of these cabinets. This is one of two. We've got dragons. We have absolutely magnificently carved, raised on claw feet with a nice brass there. These are by Maitland Smith, sort of newer, but we have a lot of Maitland Smith and named brand custom furniture in the sale. A pair of Maitland Smith planters there. Here, from a Spring Street, New York City, a wonderful lacquered and bronze mat, a nice quality heavy duty bronze leather top bureau plat. To the sides that we have a pair of what I would call uh, macabre style, um, Mid-century chairs, they have a nice ottoman, beautiful upholstery on those, the striping on the side. We have a baby grand piano by Kwai, wonderful condition. K Kwai, nice lacquer piano. Okay, into the main room, just look at this, we are loaded for the summer. Where will we start? We'll go nice and slow, Steve, because I've done no preparation for this. Here, for starters, we have, look at the color on this wonderful Philip and Kelvin Laverne table. Really beautiful blues in there. Nice big size, wonderful condition. This, I believe, is estimated two to three thousand are in that range. Here we have a wonderful size green leather Chesterfield sofa. We have lots of great carpets in the sale below here. One of them from Garden City. Many, many carpets, so I'll try and stop and mention them. We have lots of good Asian too. Senko is doing our appraisal course, so she's not here to talk about them. We have this pair of etagères. These came from Spring Street. Nice hardwood etagères. Moving right along to the smalls, we have some great Murano glass. We have this beautiful piece of enamel glass, sort of Egyptian revival, probably Moser. Tiff Arno Stuben Orien. Below here, an interesting load of Egyptian items. On the bottom of it is a label. These were quite a, an archivist from the 19th century archivist who worked for Sotheby's actually had this little collection. There's a label on the bottom. Below there, a nice Chinese clock. To right of this, a Salvador Dali, large glass sculpture by Dome. I'm gonna skim through this lot fairly quickly. We have a nice collection of oyster plates, 12 of those. We have Lalique France. We have more wonderful glass, Tiffany Studios lines, bronze enamel clock. Here we have a pair of Schneeballen, as they would say in German, Meisen lidded urns. Nice big size. They look like they're in pretty good condition. These came from a large one home. Below there, a wonderful and large pair of Meisen urns with the snake handles. These came from Riverdale, estimated I believe eight to 1200. We have a lot of, a lot, a lot of items by Roger Capron in the sale. And we put them in large groupings. These are Roger Capron here, Roger Capron here. So just watch out for if you like his stuff. We have every form of it. We have plaques, things. Below here, a nice collection of clocks, including this bronze, gilt bronze clock. More rugs on the floor. This is a very sort of Art Nouveau-y looking carpet. We have Milo Bauman chairs in the mid-century department. Here, an interesting one. These are George Nelson. We've a one lot of George Nelson with three of these lamps, so like a goat skin. We have what they call the Batman type one. We have that one in the flying saucer. Note on the back wall, we have these Roger Capron large ceramics. 
Here in the mid-century, very rare, and a lot of interest in this already, I believe this is estimated two to 3,000, Pavo Tynel, a very rare table lamp. And here we have a counterbalance lamp, also from the same estate by Pavo Tynel. Nice Murano glass, sconces, mid-century furniture, mid-century ceramics. From Scarsdale here, we have a wonderful rosewood unit. This, I really like this desk here, is one of my favorite items in the sale. We believe it might be Hans Wenger, but look at the simplicity of it, the nice polished steel legs on it. Below it, note that carpet while they're down there, Steve. We have a set of nice, nice set of six leather and chrome chairs, good condition, more mid-century furniture. Chinese Art Deco carpets by the bundles. We have about four or five of them in the sale. Look at this one, purple, beautiful condition. Atop it we have, I believe this is Maitland Smith, or a good maker, but a nice large drum table. It was the bee's knees years ago, and top of that, this might be Miller. I think they call this a mushroom lamp because it's slightly as is down here, but a nice mushroom lamp. This is by Henkel Harris, a nice high boy, bonnet top. Beautiful bronze mounted chairs to the right and left of it. Nice, beautiful quality bronze work. Nice bronze work in these chairs. Pairs of you, uh, uh, pairs of bachelor's chests. This is a nice clock. Came from Jefferson and Son in Chatham, but nice. It's got the three on the top, but nice condition. Nice mahogany case. We have Italian antique furniture. We have a nice sideboards. We have bronze candelabra. We have Boul furniture. Here, another custom made but beautiful dome top, mirrored front, secretary bookcase. Look at the inside of that. Going to be doing time to get that one together, huh? Beautiful, nice beveled mirror. More bronze mounted chairs. This is actually of note, very nice. You know, nice serpentine front, but beautiful. Uh, sort of in the style of Oscar Bach, but with the flowers and stuff makes it not him. Nice foliate down there. Nice marble top and a nice big size for your hallway. Note these carpets on the floor as we're moving along, Steve. Here we have a wonderful chandelier, beautiful patinated. Tiffany style. Below we have Capron tables. We have this very large Kerman carpet here. And on top of the carpet we have a wonderful, with large banding and inlay, Baker signed dining room table. It has leaves. A very large looking eagle sitting on top of this. Just flew in from Helsinki yesterday. Nice quality. We have uh, some wonderful stickly, stickly Audi chairs. A pair of vine torsiers. There's so much stuff. I'm just catching it as we move along. In the Asian department, we have a nice one lot of two of these. They're signed, they're Quan Yin's, but they're nice patinated bronze. Go on our site to have a look at those. From the Rye home, we have this mirror top on Louis XV1 console. Beautiful with the mirror on the console, nice block front marble. More Saruks on the ground. We have lots of chandeliers. We have hurricane chandeliers. Here we have this Adam style secretary bookcase. Nice, not just because of the paint decoration, but nice with the urn windows on it. Once again, not, not overly in vogue, but a very uh, better than usual one with the leather top. And we have a nice little period desk from the same home. This is by Ralph Lauren, this dining room table. Then we have, I believe, Beacon Hill on this. Here we have a large pair of mid-century Murano glass lamps. These came from Scarsdale. Nice, nice highly carved little, nice size, this little coffer. Probably 18th century, but nice, nicely carved below it. A nice Kazakh style carpet, Kerman. Over there, a Sheraton style secretary bookcase. I'm gonna have a quick whip into the back room here, Stephen. Okay, just lots of mahogany furniture, a nice pair of sort of Gustavian commodes there, French bed, beautiful leaded glass window. More rugs, lots of the rugs are rolled up, ready for the viewing, which is Saturday and Sunday from noon to six. Come and view because I'm missing lots of stuff that's actually here. Here, beautiful and extra, extra large marble bust of a beauty. She's a good looking girl. We have more mid-century fiberglass chairs, Saruks on the ground. Let's have a look at this big carpet over here. This is palace size. This came from Harlem. 
beautiful carpet, 19th century, in wonderful condition, wonderful colors all over pattern, but a nice big size, just fit for your Scarsdale or your palaces. Look at the size of that. And once again in the sale, we have two AIM style chairs. Beautiful soft leather, probably Italian leather, but they are in the style of AIM, so wonderful quality. We've had them before. We've got cloisonné lamps. Look at this big glass sculpture by a contemporary artist, who someone told us his name. Here we have a wonderful pair of, I suppose, famille vert or famille noir. Very large urns signed on the base. One of them, unfortunately, is very as is, but I'm sure you'll see that. We have a this Art Deco Chinese hardwood table. Look at the lines on that. What are we missing here? We have French chaise lounges, more carpets in the smalls. We have Yadros over there. We have more Roger Capron. We have jade items, more Chinese items over here. We have this beautiful uh, Kuan Yin. Nice with the gilding on it. Smells of Cypress, good smell off it. We have this sensor here, nice quality, nice enamel work on it. We have jade trees, jade lines. We have lots of stuff and I'm, with that I'm going to let you go and hand you over to our next appraiser and we will hopefully see you on Sunday at 11 a.m. But come to the previews two days before and enjoy the seat. Thank you. Welcome to our July 22nd Fine Art Preview. I'd like to start with a group of photographs that came in from a West 70th Street estate. They're by Mario Giacomelli, the self-taught Italian artist. And here are a grouping of four. Uh, these are of jubil jubilant priests in the snow. They're among his most famous images. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you them as we flip through. Uh, it's a series of four. Uh, there are actually more in the series, but we just have four here today to offer for auction. So you can see really fun images, almost abstract in the way he captures their stark black cloaks along the winter white. Two of the four are signed, uh, dated, and even dedicated. And I'll tell you the title is Io non ho mani che mi accarenzo il viso, which means I have no hands to caress my face. Uh, the one I'm holding right here is signed and dedicated uh, and dated 1974 on the back and does have the artist uh, photography stamp as well. We have actually four lots by Giacomelli in this sale and I'll just show you one of the others. This is a Scano series. So he did it in the Abruzzo uh, area in southern, in southern Italy and this is among his most famous images from that series. It's called Scano Boy. And you have in focus this small child flanked on either side by elderly women with blurred faces so it's an interesting con contrast of youth and old age. And again, almost abstract in the way he's uh, created this composition. Again, these are inscribed on the back, also with the artist stamp on the back. There are two other lots in this sale by Giacomelli, so I suggest looking at our online catalog for those. Uh, the Scano series is estimated at two to 4,000, uh, and the series of priests is estimated at five to 7,000 for the four photographs. Now up above, uh, I'd like to show you a work that's an Ashcan school, oil on masonite. So it's a beautifully executed painting, definitely done in the 1930s or 1940s. You can see really fine quality details in, in some of the faces here, especially in the figure in the foreground, the sanitation worker. It's a 14th Street subway station. And it's done in what I think is an egg tempera. Uh, you can see that really fine quality that sometimes you can only get using an egg tempera. So it's done in the style of Reginald Marsh or the like. Unfortunately, we can't find a signature anywhere on the work. Uh, on the back, there is remnants of an old exhibition label, but again, nothing that we are able to make out. But a fantastic painting. We hope that somebody's able to identify it uh, and love it as much as we do. It's estimated at 800 to 1200. Next to it, I'd like to show you a work by Orville Bowman. Bowman was an American artist. He worked in uh, the 20th century, and he was born in Michigan, but established his career as a painter in the Palm Beach area. He was very much influenced by Haiti uh, and a lot of African-American subjects as well. Here we have a cloaked figure riding on the back of a zebra, and we have a tiger in the foreground as well. This is titled Matin. It was done in 1974 signed both in the lower left and on the back of the canvas. And this is estimated at four to 6,000. 
Now as we bring it across, I'd like to show you a work by Pablo Picasso, and this is called The Round of Friendship. It's a lithograph in colors. It was done in 1959. So we have Picasso's uh, signature in the matrix down in the lower right, and then again below a pencil signature as well. And it's from an edition of 200. This came in on our walk-in Wednesday appraisal day and is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Above it, we have an oil on canvas by Jean Xiron. And this is one of three works by Xiron in the sale. This was done in, I believe, 1966, and it's a nice abstract composition. It's inscribed on the back by the artist's wife, and it says this is the last painting by Xiron before going to Athens, Greece. Um, he died in actually 1967. So a nice abstract, I'll pass by some of the others, uh, also by Xiron in the sale. And we'll keep it on abstract painting as we show you a work by Fernando Garcia Ponce. And he's a Mexican abstract artist uh, known for both painting and collage. He believed that color and form were all he needed to express emotion. Uh, and here we have a, a wonderful untitled abstract from 1970. It's an oil on paper and it's estimated at 2,000 to 3,000. And one more abstract work, also by a Mexican artist, is this large-scale oil on masonite by Leonardo Nierman. We actually have six paintings by Nierman in the sale. This is among the largest. There's maybe uh, one other in this size, in this scale. And his, his form and color are always extremely expressive. There's uh, always a nice contrast of color. We have reds against blacks and whites and they're always bursting out of the composition. So this is a wonderful example of his work. This piece is estimated at 1,500 to 2,500, and take a look online for the other works by Nierman. And let's take it across to a lithograph, also in colors, by Jean Miro, the French abstract and surrealist uh, painter. But again, this is a lithograph on paper. It was done in, 19, I believe, 1974. It's called Young Artist, so a nice large-scale piece, nicely framed, pencil sign down in the lower right corner, and from edition of 75 uh, down in the lower left, estimated at three to 4,000. Now I'd like to show you work from the early 20th century. This is by Anne Estelle Rice. Rice is an, an American female painter. Uh, she later uh, worked in Britain as well. But she uh, was known for her illust illustrative work. She actually had much success as an illustrator, both in the US and in England. Some of her work is uh, very fovis, where she's using heavy contour lines, uh, very intentional line and form. And we can see some of that in this coastal oil on masonite. You can see a wonderful play of light and shadow as well uh, as the trees fall over the coastline. Signed down in the lower right from a New Jersey estate and estimated at two to three thousand. As we take it across I'll show you this is another work by Zeron. This one I believe also uh, done in the 1960s, 1963, signed and dated on the back of the work. Uh, and I'd like to point out up above it we have some other photography lots in this sale. This one here is by Cornell Kappa. Kappa was a Hungarian-born American photographer. He had a career as a staff photographer for Life magazine and later Magnum. Uh, he began doing prints for Henri Cartier-Bresson uh, and later established himself as a well-known photographer in his own right. So in 1958, he went to the Soviet Union and did a study of Bolshoi ballet photographs, this being one of them, and it is signed, dated on the back with a Magnum stamp as well. There is another one in the sale, which I will quickly show you as we move across here. And this one here is Children, Front View. This is also from 1958 at the Bolshoi uh, Ballet. Same signature stamp, Verso. Each one of these photographs is estimated at 1,500 to 25. There is a third one from this series also in the sale. Again, look online for that. And down below, this is the last of three works by Jean Ziron. This one is an early work, it's called Musique, and it was done in 1932. So quite different from the other two I showed you, a more figurative work, uh, but still in a modernist style. But here he's also just using uh, contour lines, fluid contour lines. And this was done while the artist was working in Paris. 
So a nice painting also estimated at 1500 to 2500. And there's one other work I'd like to show you, which is actually a sculpture. We'll bring it to the middle here. I believe uh, Ron may have touched on some of the ceramic works by Roger Caprone, uh, but this is a significant sculpture by the artist. Caprone was a mid-century ceramicist, and this is just a really fun, whimsical piece that's actually in three parts. So a ceramic work uh, with polychrome glaze. We have a fish and bird with figurehead on top, almost a, a rooster's crown on the head. It is signed. This is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. That about sums up what I'd like to show you today, but we hope you'll join us for our auction preview this weekend and the sale on Sunday, July 22nd. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to the July 22nd preview of Jewelry and Silver. Here we have a large English silver flatware service. It is a combination of various different artists, different silversmiths, different periods, but some nice pieces and all well matched. So although they're not by the same artist, it's a well matched service. And this is being offered at 8 to 1200 out of a Westport, Connecticut estate. Here we have a 59 piece Reed and Barton Francis the First flatware service, estimate of 600 to 900. Um, and this is out of a Bronxville estate. This is by Girardus Boyer, early coin silver, beautiful borders here, nice finials, three pieces together, a large service, so large in size, but in great condition. Miscellaneous Tiffany Sterling flatware service. We have these wonderful blackberry spoons. This I believe is called the fruit and vine pattern, but really quite nice. Each piece is a little bit different. Sorry about that, everyone. Really nice service here. One of the more unusual patterns. And then we have this partial service. All together is that grouping. Large pool sterling pedestal bowl out of a Patterson, New York estate, estimate of 800 to 1,000. Really wonderful one from one of our walk-in days is this Hans Hansen flatware service, service for 12. I believe that there's 11 spoons, so for the most part it is a complete service, estimated at 1,200 to 1,500. A really nice service, in good condition. Also from Walk-In Wednesday is this really wonderful English silver covered tureen or covered bowl. Um, you can see the wonderful crests here. And actually, there's a historical inscription. If you can see it and I can find it. I'm sorry, it's on here. So this is inscribed to HRH, the Duke of York. Estimate of 800 to 1,000. Beautiful condition, beautiful design. Also from the same estate is this pair of 950 French silver Leon Lepar gravy boats with underplates. Each does have a liner in it and really of the utmost quality. Beautiful vine decoration here to the handles, X form here. Really nice, nice, nice gravy boats. Here we have a, a late 18th, early 19th century, early American Robert Swan teapot at 1,000 to 1,500, also out of our Bronxville estate. And this is a wonderful pair of sterling candlesticks. Great rosette or rose decoration here, applied leaf or acanthus leaves here, um, together at 600 to 800, kind of has a, a Bucciolati feel to it to me. Um, some nice various finishes to the piece and a really nice tall size. Here we have an Austro-Hungarian covered pedestal cup or, or urn. Oop, let's see if I can get this off without breaking it. Uh, wonderful man on horseback here. And there's actually, if you take a look, there is a, a monogram here, some sort of familial crest. So that I wasn't able to determine who it was, but it is quite interesting. Nice gold wash to the interior. It is fully marked for sterling. There is an inscription, a Hebrew inscription to the body of the cup and also this coat of arms. So those are interesting aspects of this piece. Next from the same estate is this German 812 silver uh, man on donkey. Nice inlaid jewels to the base and to his, his outfit here and all of the 
the hardware to the saddle. Um, nice piece at 600 to 900. Miscellaneous grouping, there's also some candlesticks that goes with this lot um, out of a Connecticut estate. But an interesting lot of pearls. We have this nice 18 karat gold bracelet, uh, travel pencil, some Danish silver with enamel work, uh, thimble, some vanity service pieces, uh, malachite and onyx, a wonderful pair of lorgnettes or opera glasses, which I should have opened prior to this starting. Beautiful marcosite inlaid flowers, really nice condition, interesting and really nice quality. And all of these are together also with this Asian case. So you can see all of the designs here, quite nice. Um, I'm going to do this and then skip back to, to one of the nicest pieces in the sale. A nice Russian silver menorah or candelabra. So the arms here do rotate. So it can either be a candelabra or a menorah. Uh, one arm does have to be re-soldered, but this is being offered at 600 to 900. A beautiful Mexican Puefer cat covered bowl. Wonderful wood handles, really beautiful design to the piece. Um, and this was created in the early 1940s when Puefer Cat, um, he actually, he fled a German invaded France and he ended up in Mexico around the time of when Spratling and all of the, the well-known Mexican artists were working and you can really see their influence in this piece. It's being offered with a conservative estimate of 600 to 800. Um, in very good condition, the handles, they do need to be reattached and the the bolt or the screw is a little bit too short, so that needs to be replaced. But I'd like you to take a look at all of the markings on the bottom. So it is fully stamped, really a beautiful piece. The best design work, really a wonderful example of his work while in Mexico. And again, this is at 600 to 800. Moving on to our jewelry selection, we'll start with one of the, the nicest in this sale is this this power or suite of David Webb 18 karat gold jewelry um, inlaid with diamond accents and ruby, emerald, and sapphire cabochons. Um, so we have this choker length necklace, really beautiful, beautiful design, typical of David Webb, just screaming quality. Um, but the really nice part about this is that it can either be choker length or you can attach the bracelets to lengthen it. Um, so it can be this length or you can attach the other and it can be twice as long. So it's really quite nice and this is being offered at 6,000 to 9,000, I'm sorry. And this is also out of our Patterson, New York estate. And a second lot of David Webb in this sale is this beautiful pair of 18 karat gold earrings. Again, jade cabochons, lapis lazuli, surround and diamond accents, two to 3,000 pair of 18 karat gold and diamond earrings, estimate of 400 to 600. Little sweet earrings there, nice box. And out of our Connecticut estate, blue cabochon with diamond accents. Really a good looking ring, I thought. I actually quite like it. And this is estimated at 300 to 500. Stuart Devlin, English silver egg in the nice Cartier box with the original pamphlet here with the serial number and you open it up for a nice surprise of a little entremblant or, or little bobblehead rabbit really. So that's sweet, so it is a gold wash to the English silver. Out of a local estate, this charm bracelet, 14 karat gold with the five 14 karat gold charms at 1,000 and 1,500. And this is a David Yerman style bracelet, 14 karat gold faceted amethyst, and then these, these colored gem cabochons, 400 to 600. Also out of our Connecticut estate, this miscellaneous grouping. Beautiful ring with the green cabochon, scarab, some interesting Norwalk memorabilia. Actually, I'm originally from Norwalk, some school pendants, cufflinks, and then this is interesting. So it's this Greek ring, and then on the verse is an intaglio of a soldier. Really nice quality. Grouping of lorgnettes, all silver, Art Nouveau, beautiful 300 to 500. We have this sweet gold inlaid with diamonds, the choker length necklace and matched earrings at 2,500 to 3,000. And here, one of two diamonds in the sale that we brought to GIA is this 2.79 pear cut diamond 
and it is H color VS1 quality, so it really is a beautiful stone. Let me see here if you can really see the brilliance in this stone. It's really wonderful. A beautiful stone. Right now it's set in a pendant, but it would really make a nice ring. And this is estimated at 6,000 to 9,000. From the same estate as our charm bracelet, we have this little yellow diamond. And all of the information for this stone is online. Originally it came in this multi-tier ring, but it is quite lovely. 18 karat yellow gold statement necklace inlaid with diamonds and again with rubies, sapphires and emeralds, some faceted, some cabochon. So if I just can hold, and really quite heavy in weight. Really beautiful, a statement piece for sure, would look great against a black dress. Estimate of 1,500 to 2,500. A pair of gold cufflinks with these interesting Thai coins. Estimate of 400 to 600. And here we have this Chinese 50 won coin, and it is gold, estimated at 600 to 900. And if you just also would like to see the, the verse here. Pear-shaped diamond, diamond accents, estimate of 800 to 1,000. Nice men's watch. So hold on, let me see if I can correctly pronounce this. So it's a universal pole router jet. Really nice with the original box, also out of our Connecticut estate. Miscellaneous grouping out of rye. We have some Chinese carved amethyst, jade, some more jade, these gold nugget cufflinks. We have some George Jensen gold, 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 all together at 400 to 600. And I'm going to end on this miscellaneous grouping of jewelry with some interesting pieces. So there's some sterling, there's some enamel work, rose quartz, but this is really great. Sterling Gucci in the original box. So that's really quite nice, I think. And another Gucci piece is this really wonderful design Sterling bracelet with the original dust bag. And that is going to wrap it up. Oh, and one more thing is we do have two color gems, emeralds that are still in GIA that we're getting back on either Thursday or Friday. So if you wanna check our site for that, and I hope to see you on the 22nd. Thank you.